This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Thank you to our sponsors, Wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and GetFlyWheel.com. Hello there, and welcome back to uh, Philly Drone Tech here on the phillytech.org podcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Well, it's, uh, believe it or not, it's February already, and of course, if you live in the Northeast, uh, Philly Drone Tech, um, well, you know, we just had a, uh, our first major snowstorm, uh, 24 inches plus in the Philadelphia region, so that caused uh, quite a bit of a mess. Um, uh, later on in the show, toward the end, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll highlight a couple of uh, drone-inspired videos uh, of the uh, aftermath of the storm, which are very cool and uh, cool to see. So uh, this show, I'm going to be uh, talking a lot about uh, an event I went to uh, back in December uh, called the Government Video Expo and Drone Show. Here's my well-worn uh, program guide from that. Um, this is a Government Video Expo. is something that they've had for a long time there in the D.C. area for, um, uh, for video producers uh, in the private sector as well as the, as, as well the, uh, the government sector. Uh, this is the first time they've included uh, drones which I'd say took up about a quarter of the conference. Um, but it was very cool, and I learned a lot. So uh, we'll uh, look at that uh, kind of in the middle of the show there. But as I always uh, start off doing, uh, we'll talk about the FAA. Um, the big news with the FAA is that uh, we're now um, just over a month in of the new registration. Uh, there's been a lot of rumblings about uh, its legalities and, and all that, but uh, it, it seems like it's, it's here to stay. Um, it was successful at getting people to sign up. Um, for the first month, they were um, refunding you. It was, it's $5, but uh, the, for the first month, they were refunding you that $5. Um, during that time, uh, upwards of uh, 300,000 people have registered their, uh, their drones with the FAA. So uh, that's a mission accomplished there. Uh, um, now that the drones are registered, now we see what the next step is as far as uh, enforcement uh, or say using those registration numbers to be able to fly at places if you give them your registration number. But that kind of remains to be un unseen um, right now. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, the AMA, the uh, Academy of Model uh, Aeronautics, uh, has, has been working with the uh, FAA and it first put out uh, a press release urging its members not to sign and not to sign up because they were working with the FAA to uh, hopefully uh, have them adapt the already AMA numbers that they give out to all their members. I'm a member and I have that number too. Um, I, I kind of saw what was going to happen with this, and uh, we'll fast forward a little bit to about two days before the end of the free trial when they send an email out to all their members saying, okay, register with the FAA. So um, I, I'll admit I kind of saw that coming. Um, anybody that works in IT, I probably mentioned this last show, but uh, anybody that works in uh, IT would tell you uh, maintaining one database is better than two. So to have like drones that some are registered under the FAA, some are registered under another uh, database, that's, that's adding a lot more needless work than necessary. We, sh we just need one database. So now they've said, okay, register. We're still gonna try to fight so that they can use the AMA number, but uh, until then, register. So uh, hopefully everybody got in uh, before paying the $5 and um, well, like I said, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, so um, my next thing that I, I want to talk about is, is actually in the Philly area. There's been a lot happening uh, lately in, the, in Philly. This is kind of new. I just found this out the uh, other day. The, uh, the city controller's office uh, did an experiment using a drone uh, to inspect uh, dilapidated building structures in the city. And it went very, very well for them. So they hope to. Um, they, they hope to uh, get the approval to uh, continue doing it this way. Uh, it saves them a lot of money. They can cover a, a, a huge area all at once. And uh, here's uh, some video here I'm showing you of uh, what they uh, uncovered. I mean, you can see a lot of the state of the, the buildings from uh, overhead. That is a lot harder to do on the ground. It take a lot longer time. And uh, you can uh, get plenty of, uh, plenty of uh, work uh, 
all at once in the air uh, via a drone. So, uh, it, like I said, it went very well, and they're hoping to do this uh, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the future. Uh, so there we go. There's, uh, there's one uh, the, the local uh, drone use that uh, we'll probably see down the pike. And I have a couple more uh, toward the end of the podcast uh, that also happened in the Philly area that you'll want to see. But uh, meanwhile, uh, let's talk about the uh, Government Video Expo. This was held at the Walter E. Uh, Washington Convention Center in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, back in uh, early December. Um, it's uh, one of the largest of the uh, expos uh, for video technology in the region. Uh, it's not only for uh, government, uh, but also private sector as well. Um, as you can see, many of the exhibits here. For the first time, they, um, they've now added a drone uh, portion of it. Um, it was about, I'd say the drones covered about maybe like a quarter of the entire conference. Uh, but they had a lot going on. They had uh, different seminars and speakers on uh, drone technology, as you can see here. Um, and also, oh, this is a good one here. This is a surveillance, uh, basically a surveillance uh, vehicle uh, that, that can uh, basically can collaborate uh, footage from various drones around a particular area and uh, monitor them all at once. Uh, think of that for surveillance or for disaster relief. Um, and no uh, drone show would be complete without having a fly cage. And they had a uh, little fly cage here. And uh, here we go here. You can see that right now they're demoing a uh, DJI Inspire 1. Uh, they had pretty good crowds uh, turn out for this. Everybody loves seeing them fly. Um, you know, they had all sorts of different types here. Here's, uh, here's one. Uh, that uh, this is used for uh, Hollywood for motion pictures. This can uh, hold a much uh, like a red camera, a uh, much uh, more sophisticated uh, camera uh, system. This one will run you about it's uh, eight propellers. It'll run you about uh, twenty thousand dollars. And this one here, uh, this this kind of impressed me. This was by a, a U.S. based company called Unique, uh, Y U N E E C. Um, very uh, looked very comparable to the DJI uh, series of uh, quadcopters. So uh, it's uh, it'll be curious to see uh, what these guys do in the marketplace. And this was a this was a very unique one here. This is a fixed wing drone. Uh, its advantages are it can uh, take off vertically uh, like a drone, and then it can turn horizontal and then fly like an airplane with a fixed wing structure, which is actually very efficient. Um, for battery of life. This particular one could fly for about uh, four hours in the air. So it was a lot of fun. It was very informative and uh, I had a good time going to it. And uh, definitely um, I expect them to have even uh, more involvement with drones in the coming years. So I definitely look forward to uh, attending this uh, next year to see, uh, see what they uh, have to offer. Well, I'm going to take my usual little 30-second uh, sponsor break here, and then when I come back, uh, we're going to look at some uh, some of the snow uh, storm footage uh, in the Philly region uh, that came to you from, of course, drones. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at phillytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. And by Soho Mail, professional low-cost email with business class features and security. Welcome back. Well, uh, if you live in the Philly region uh, or anywhere in the Northeast, actually, you uh, probably just uh, went through... Uh, a couple weeks ago, went through our first major snowstorm of the year, as it was uh, joked about on Facebook, with the fact that the winter has, up to this point, been incredibly mild, uh, that uh, winter decided to come all at once in one weekend. So it dumped about uh, two feet or more on the Philly uh, area, and I was happy to see a lot of uh, drone footage. In fact, uh, I, I took one, uh, I took my, uh, my drone here out uh, myself, and uh, did some around uh, my local uh, my local park lake, uh, but let's uh, let's look at some of the other stuff from uh, Philly. Uh, this first one comes from uh, Channel Six Action News. 
Uh, I didn't even know this, but apparently back in May, they launched what they call, uh, what they call Drone 6, which I don't think they've really used yet up until now. Uh, here's a beautiful, uh, some beautiful footage of uh, flying over Philadelphia just right after the snow with the uh, snow still on the roofs and everything. And they also followed uh, some kids sledding. This is the hills of uh, Belmont Plateau. And there's even uh, some over the dog parks at the Schuylkill River Park. Um, a lot of people, a lot of the drone enthusiasts uh, online were kind of upset at this, uh, being how the media is always down on, uh, they're quick to reporting all the bad stuff with drones. And here they are using them themselves. Well, folks, that's the way it is. And um, I see it as a good thing because it means that the FAA is now loosening uh, their, their grip a little bit and letting uh, people use these things. So the fact that uh, they obviously flew over people and, you know, in, in close proximity to an airport and they still allowed it, I see that as a pretty good sign. That's uh, anything that can help us in the future. And let's face it, I think that uh, news gathering with drones is going to become increasingly popular as the FAA allows, uh, allows for it to happen. And it looks like they have in the Philadelphia area. Speaking of the Philadelphia area, here, here's another one. I've, I've reported on these guys before, Philly by Air, uh, that also had, did a, a beautiful flyover around uh, some of the uh, uh, sites of Philadelphia, including the Art Museum and, and, uh, and, and Ben Franklin Parkway and all that. Uh, it's a very, very well done, very beautiful, beautiful video. And, um, on the flip side of that, uh, that shows some of the devastation that happened, at least if in, the, in the shore communities, uh, there was a lot of flooding. And here's a, uh, here's a video of Avalon, uh, New Jersey, uh, with a drone. And you can see uh, the, the extents of the flooding. Again, this is where drones will be not only just for news gathering, but for, um, for, for evaluating uh, disaster relief. And uh, you can get a lot of shots pretty quickly and pretty pretty low to get a lot of detail on uh, on some of the damage. And here's one. Here's a perfect example here of uh, of Avalon, New Jersey, uh, having the uh, the storm damage from the uh, latest blizzard. Okay, I have one more for you, and and it's uh, it's one that I did. Um, I did this. Uh, it ended up being a quick video that I did Monday after the storm. I went to my local uh, park with the lake. I did. Uh, I did uh, in the fall. I I did uh, a fly around of the lake as the as the colors were changing on the leaves, and I actually went out not with the idea of even capturing some video. I just wanted to get some, uh, I was going to do some stills. I just wanted to get some footage of as close to after the storm as possible. But I was going to some of my usual places that I go to and, and everything's still closed off. They, they haven't cleared. In fact, I couldn't even get into the park. None of the park entrances were, were snow plowed. So the park was basically closed. I managed to find on the side of the road, I found a little jut in. I could put my car so I, I put it there, and it's very close to the lake itself. And uh, as I was uh, driving, I, I noticed the lake was partially frozen over, which I really wasn't expecting. It has been so mild uh, in the Philly region that that lake, I was not expecting to be even remotely frozen. I was just expecting to get some, uh, some footage of the, the ground around it. Uh, but what I found was spectacular. Uh, here's a little bit of a clip here. And, uh, and I, you know, leave like links up here for you, for you to uh, to go and, and visit uh, visit this. But uh, just uh, this this is what I call the money shot, uh, looking straight down at all the formations of of the snow on the ice and the and the partially frozen lake. And uh, I I consider the whole video was just a happy accident. And you know, sometimes that happens. And, uh, but I, I was pretty pleased at uh, seeing this this site again. I wasn't expecting it at all. Okay, so that ends uh, another another podcast. Um, again, you've been seeing my uh, Twitter handle and my email address pop up on the screen. Uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, send me an email and, uh, you know, let me know your thoughts, uh, suggestions, um, things I, I should uh, address in upcoming episodes, uh, you know, products to look at and, and uh, of that nature. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, on my Medium account, uh, here's, the address has also been flashing on the screen there, I will include all the links to everything that I talked about uh, on the show today. Uh, you'll be able to access and be able to, to, to look directly uh, pretty easily. 
So uh, there we go there. And again, uh, thank you very much for joining me. And I hope to see you next time.